one of the things that's most important, I think, about what happens at the co-op is, uh, is cooperation. three categories of shoppers. We have your paying, I mean working members who get a 10% discount over the shelf price. We have non-working members who, although they support the co-op monetarily and in other ways that sometimes they uh, aren't working uh, regularly, which is one hour a month, so they pay the regular price. And then we have uh, non-members, which also pay the the floor price. Dial the price per pound, it changes up there, they put their item on and the scale computes it. We usually keep a good supply of pencils and scrap paper for lots of note taking. We hope that by the time the shopper's done and they end up at the cash register, all they've got is the totals and what they've bought and then we just add it up for them and take the money. Bakery section. Breads. We have bread come from three different sources. People's Bakery in Minneapolis, which is a collectively run uh, bakery that uses organics when they can, um, whole grains, dried fruits, uh, unrefined oils, and whatnot. This is in Minneapolis. Did I say that? Minneapolis, right. Uh, Alpine Springs Bakery, which is a local bakery in Wisconsin. It's a Seventh-day Adventist uh, rural academy for uh, high schoolers and they have a bakery over there and we've been getting bread from them they use whole wheat flours no preservatives and we also get bread from a bakery in uh, Haig Wisconsin which is a small general store and he does some <coughs> baking right outside his store we also get granola from people's bakery and granola from the Alpine Springs the products that we carry here are cheese and butter uh, yogurt, cottage cheese, mostly cheese products is what, we, is what we handle. We don't carry any milk or anything. We carry a lot of cheese and we, we get probably 75% of the cheeses that we sell here from local creameries. There's one in uh, Elgin, Minnesota that we do a lot of business with and one in uh, Nelson, Wisconsin. Both of them are within 40 miles of Winona. It's in just a, another thing in keeping with trying to buy locally. We do a lot of that. We try to buy locally. We also get cheeses from the cheese wrestlers in Minneapolis, which is a collective uh, that comes down on the Dance Warehouse truck. Dance is, a, is, a, is our principal warehouse in Minneapolis. It's a collective that, that uh, handles the wholesaling of the foods to go out to the state co-ops. Uh, um, their trucks come in here every, every other week, twice a month. Uh, yogurt, which we don't have any right now. Yogurt comes from Gentle Sky, which is another wholesale collective that operates, that sends their stuff down through dance. Most of these collectives are soon to be located all in the same warehouse in Minneapolis. We, uh, part, of our, part of our biggest problems at the co-op is supply and having things in stock uh, because we run on a, a fairly tight flow, cash flow basis because we don't have a lot of money to work with. Uh, we have to keep our inventories as close to our sales as we can without having a lot of extra on hand. So like it happens when the two week period comes to an end and the truck is coming in where starting to run out of a lot of things and it gets to be a problem but um, I guess that's one of the one of the things we have to work on working in a co-op down the center are um, all our grains and flowers here too we are principally local stuff um, probably 90% of this is locally 
uh, whole wheat flour is from two spots that are close in, Wiscoy Valley Land Co-op mills some of our whole wheat, our rye products, uh, corn products, Diamond K Enterprises, which is a uh, organic farm in St. Charles, does, m does our buckwheat, uh, sunflower, various kinds of pancake mixes. Little Bear Trading Company is a is another he's another miller uh, local miller over by Cochrane, Wisconsin. We get our whole wheat flour from. Do a lot of business with them. They also supply some of the flour for uh, or the flour that Dance distributes in Minneapolis too. This is the apothecary and herb section. Um, most of the stuff in here is supplied by Red Star which is another collective in Minneapolis that distributes itself wholesale through dance. Um, as you can see, it's pretty complete. Our herb person uh, is very efficient and reliable. They're all alphabetically listed, and they're grouped together, both the, the teas, the medicinal, or, the, or just the general drinking tea are listed alphabetically along with the spices. Like you'd have alfalfa with allspice, etc. The shoppers are free to use the various herbal books. If they need any references, they're here. The procedure for getting something out of here is just selecting what it is you want, taking it out with a scoop, using one of these bags. This is uh, English breakfast tea. It's got caffeine in it. Price per ounce, most of them are. There's the price down here, and there's a little ounce scale. There again, the shopper does his own computing. Back here is the whole wheat pasta section. We have everything from whole wheat baby shells to flat noodles lasagna, spinach lasagna, whole wheat chow mein. This whole wheat chow mein here is uh, made from the flour that's milled over in Cochran, Wisconsin, the Little Bear flour. It's a popular item. Whole wheat elbow macaroni. Our two granolas that I mentioned before, Hag granola and the People's Bakery. Most of the beans are back here. Uh, the beans are come mostly from dance. We do have some from the Diamond K there at, uh, in St. Charles. Over here is uh, the nuts and seeds, roasted sunflower nuts, roasted soy nuts, roasted peanuts, roasted cashews, raw nuts, almonds and, and cashews. The seeds, here's our dog food. This is our vegetable cooler which runs anywhere from being so full we can't get anything in it to almost empty. Produce uh, is sort of a unique thing in its own to sell, I guess. Uh, we like to get organic stuff when we can, and in season we try to get as much stuff that's grown by the members. Um, a lot of our members are rural members, and they have large gardens, and they bring in a lot of their excess produce to the store. Um, during the winter, however, we get, sporadically, we get uh, produce. Uh, AJ Sweet is the main distributor down in Minneapolis. There is a collective in, in uh, or excuse me, in La Crosse. There is a collective in Minneapolis that's trying to get going called Roots and Fruits, and they're going to try to be a, an outlet for organic growers around the country. We get some California citrus products and Texas citrus products that are uh, organically grown and we get it from them on the dance truck that comes down from Minneapolis. The eggs are all locally raised eggs. Most of them are by members too. Um, we buy them in flats and then people fill up their own egg cartons with the eggs. Uh, I think all of them are organically fed chickens and, pro and most of them are chickens that are free-ranging, and they're 
mighty fresh too. Some of them are still warm from the chicken when we get them in. The dried fruits and oils are here. Uh, again, all our dried fruits come from Dance, the distributor in uh, Minneapolis. Um, we've got fruits ranging from raisins from California to dried pineapples from Taiwan. We try to get organic when we can. Uh, when we can't, we get the dried fruits that are the least adulterated, like sulfur. They sulfur dried fruits as a as a means of preserving it. Um, and there's some question about the sulfuring of the of the fruit. Oils are also come from dance, with the exception of the sunflower oil, which is a diamond K. Uh, it's fresh pressed. Uh, most of the oil, or all of the oils that we sell here are unrefined oils. That means they don't, uh, they're not gone through a, um, a heat process and then which kills along with the, with the various uh, bacteria, also the, the vitamins and nutrients which they have to reintroduce into the oil as they do with processed oils, uh, non-hydrogenated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are some, some uh, pretty strange trips on how they refine oil. Uh, one of the ways that commercial oil is refined is by uh, mixing it with uh, mineral spirits and the mineral spirits draw out the the uh, the essential oil from the seed that they mix the seed with and and then after they've done that then they take it through a chemical process which takes the mineral spirits out of the finished oil this is our cheese cutting table and the various utensils for cleaning cheese cutting is probably one of our more popular volunteer, in-store volunteer jobs. There's the cheese knife. Most of our cheese, we get it in large blocks and we cut it up ourselves. For uh, convenience and cleanliness, we need to cut the cheese, have a volunteer cutting and wrapping and labeling the cheese and putting it into the cooler rather than having a customer cut it himself. Uh, <clears throat> It gets to be, we get a little behind on it quite often, and we'll end up with more cheese down in the bottom and big blocks than we have cheese cut up on top. And they do pretty well. The volunteering is, is uh, really a wide-ranging sort of an activity. There's, it's everything from coming in and spending your hour at the store, which the requirements for a volunteer, again, are one hour per month per buying member of the family. Um, and ways, are, there's a lot of ways of doing it, uh, but one of them is coming in and doing your hour once a month or whatever. Peanut butter, one of the most popular items in the store. These, are, these come to us in 35 pound tubs. They come through dance from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we have them in crunchy and smooth, and the process, as with everything else, is uh, helping yourself. However, if the peanut butter it's uh, because of the health regulations the coordinators generally got to take care of this uh, filling the jars we go through the crunchies we sell upwards to six of these tubs every two every two weeks which at 35 pounds a tub ends up to be a lot of peanut butter a few magazines that we carry again all almost all of them are food or co-op related uh, literature. And here's the stove that kept us warm all winter. We heated entirely with wood this year. This was the first year that we heated without an auxiliary system such as oil or gas and except for a, a couple of uh, really hard days in January, we, it did pretty good. We didn't lose very much stock. It's a, as you see, it's a fairly large store, but the stove seems to do it pretty good. And Salmon Foods moved in in October of 72 as a storefront, but before that time, Famine Foods was just a buying club. Um, it started out in the spring of 72 with a group of oh, about 25 people decided they wanted to get uh, foods that they couldn't get 
from the grocery store, like brown rice, whole wheat flour, and things like that. And they contacted a warehouse in Minneapolis called People's Warehouse, and they'd have people in, within those 25 people would go up to Minneapolis and bring it back in their cars or their trucks or something, and then when they get it back to Winona, they would divide it up as a buying club. Well, it got to the point where there's so many people wanting to participate, they had to look for a storefront or a place to warehouse, keep the food instead of having to divide it all up at, when it came in. So um, one of the members who is still a, a member of this co-op found this building. And at first, we're just in the very front portion of the store. You'll see the first wall, and that's as much space was Famine Foods. And there's probably about 25 items including the brown rice, whole wheat, uh, raisins, vinegar, molasses, some real basic type foods. Um, for about the first two years, it was operated on a strictly volunteer basis. It was people going up to the cities to pick up food, uh, contacting area farmers for like eggs or vegetables in the summer and things like that. Um, for those two years, nobody got paid. The store was open whenever somebody happened to have a key and walk in. The key was kept at like the police station or next door at Ernie Coopy's feed store, or somebody just took it home with them, and it made it real inconvenient for people living out of town to come in and shop. And one person who was in that situation, who's living in Wisconsin, got fed up with it, so he decided to pursue becoming the full-time manager. And that's what happened. In the summer of 74, Michael Doyle, um, became manager and he sought government funding through Operation Mainstream which turned into the CETA funding and he was the manager for about a year. About halfway through that year in uh, 75 a co-manager came on who was John Kruger. Um, they co-managed for a number of months and then in the spring of 75 we decided to go to a grand scheme of having daily coordinators. So each day of the week had a different person working. There was Monday coordinator, Tuesday coordinator, etc. Um, so like the Thursday coordinator would also have another focus, uh, could be doing, uh, organizing the cheese cutting or ordering the cheese, another person ordered the local grains and beans and had focuses like that. We tried that system for about six months to have, oh, not quite a year, and then we decided to even get more people involved and had uh, half-day coordinators. That system became a little crazy. <laughs> Um, as you could imagine, there wasn't anybody as, uh, you know, specifically designated to do some tasks. So one person might be ordering one week and somebody else would order the same food and we get duplicate orders or somebody else wouldn't order at all. Um, people would come in to want to volunteer and they wouldn't know what to do. Um, customers wouldn't get any questions answered very well. It's just quite chaotic for quite a while. Um, so we decided to go to... Uh, two main workers and pay them a little better. The wages at that time, besides the CETA workers who got CETA funded money, we paid them a dollar an hour, um, which is it's a little token to help them maintain their interests, but it wasn't enough. There's a turnover of workers all the time. Coordinators would you know, come every three, four, five, five months and you'd have a whole new group of people working. So because of that inexperience, um, it was real hard to maintain the store. Um, but when we got the two main workers, they had specific focuses. One was to coordinate volunteer work, and another one was to do the ordering and the bookkeeping. Um, we've maintained that system for about two, three years now. However, we have grown quite a bit. Um, we still have the volunteer coordinator and an orderer, but the bookkeeping has been done is now done by a, a separate person. Originally, I was I got into the whole field of cooperative foods and buying for two main reasons. One was nutritional. Um, when I gave up meat ten years ago, eight years ago, there really weren't any other ways to to buy what I wanted. The stores didn't carry food. The regular grocery stores just did not carry the foods that I wanted. So I, with friends, got into buying clubs which became co-ops mm -hmm. when, when a great number of people joined. The other reason is uh, ecological. The waste is, is so much less. It really means a lot to me, yes. I really feel strongly about um, reusing bags and, and uh, reusing jars and, uh, uh, you know, the whole, the whole paper industry and the whole glass industry. So that's a real, real strong motivation to keep me. And now it's, uh, 
it's everything. It's the whole. Uh, way of life. It is a way of life for, for me. I think when when I travel, I go to food co-ops. You know, it's not. Uh, I look look them up and, and shop there. It's a place where I feel real comfortable and uh, at ease with people. They're basic foods that that are always in every co-op that I've ever been in, and I don't know why, you know, except the whole grains, a variety of grains and uh, flowers, uh, the, um, the dairy products, the Altadena dairy products. It's always, always been in health food stores or co-ops that I've shopped in for the last 10 years. First of all, the fact that it's a locally provided food, uh, especially around 40% of it, is an attractive thing, uh, especially for me and my husband, because we had this idea that supporting the local merchant is an, a commitment that um, all of us do have for the survival of uh, the producer who is not so large, because the massive producer is uh, the one who is really making a lot of wealth from uh, the food that he is providing to the uh, the people of the United States as well as not knowing where also where the, all the source of that food is coming from. And second of all, the fact that a major portion of it is organic uh, is also uh, a real good point in that we are assured that there is no chemical additive or preservative added to the food, which is a thing that is noted by many Europeans when they have come to the United States will note in the counters uh, saying, oh, your food stays so fresh for so long. Why is that? Well, we know that there is a lot of preservative added to food. And when, there, when you're given a choice, uh, that is a, a real plus for the co-op, too, which it does provide labeling that um, does give us the a choice of choosing organic food. And the fact that most of the time it is fresh, the shelf life is very short. There is quite a turnover in most of the fresh vegetables and grains. And that is also um, a thing that we appreciate. Effective in terms of uh, educating people, the primary thrust, obviously, of the organization is food. We are a food cooperative. Um, we're responsible for, for making available to people in this vicinity uh, high quality, low-cost food, uh, whole grain foods, foods that are grown organically, foods that are grown um, as close to the area as possible. Uh, we're in a rather enviable position here in Winona because there are several uh, reputable, uh, high-quality organic farms in the area, small organic farms, um, many of, well, several of which are coupled with organic flour mills. So we're able to obtain uh, foods directly from the, uh, from the growers. Um, that way we eliminate a lot of, uh, of the uh, costs that come in between through the middlemen. Uh, we're also a member of the uh, Distributing Alliance of the North Country uh, Cooperatives, a warehouse, cooperative warehouse in Minneapolis, so we're able to bring foods there. We're very effective uh, on that plane. We're able to get the food to the people at a low cost, very high quality food. The co-op movement had two purposes, to provide low cost, cheap food to people and to educate people about food. Well, this store is running well enough now on a daily basis that we are able to go ahead and do education in the community. And we have a, a food education committee called Corn and Beans. And that group is doing cooking classes, is doing speaking engagements, forums, seminars. We are hitting Winona with what to do about food, how to get good food into your bodies, what the whole chemical aspect of growing food, what the food industry has done through packaging and processing has done to uh, ruin our bodies and so we're trying to bring the perspective in of what good whole foods can do to make you healthy.
by, uh, by trying to obtain foods that are grown close to home, um, we're eliminating some of, the, some of the energy intensity that goes into producing those foods and bringing them here. Um, if we were able to get food that's grown closely, we don't have to pay high amounts for food that's shipped uh, from great distances, thereby uh, wasting fuel or um, spending energy that, ne that needn't be spent. Also, we know how that food is grown. We know what the working conditions are of the, of the laborers who produce the food. Um, this might not be the case if we were to be selling uh, uh, food from, from large food conglomerate corporations um, in far-flung places where we don't know about the labor conditions, we don't know about the uh, local politics where the food is produced. By concentrating mainly in this area and through the cooperative network, we're able to, to ascertain that, um, that the food we're growing is, is good food, is high quality food, is, is, uh, has a minimum of processing to it, doesn't, has been produced without the poisons, many of the modern poisons that are used in, in uh, larger farming endeavors. And, um, and we know something about the people that make it and how it affects people where they live. It just makes, uh, makes sense to me. What we're talking about is, is a, uh, a scheme of things in which each of us is a part of, of a much larger system. We're all part of, of a biosystem, of an ecosystem. And as members of that system, um, okay, I'll speak for myself because this is largely my own food philosophy I'm talking about. As a member of, of a natural system in which I'm involved, it makes the most sense to me to be eating foods that are grown. Well, for example, I mentioned I live on a land cooperative. I, I eat mostly foods that are grown at our farm, foods that we, we grow during the season and foods that we keep put up for keeping through the winter time. Um, the food is grown on the same system in which we live. It's grown in the same soil that we live on. It's grown um, in, under the same weather conditions. So obviously all of the energy that goes into that is the same energy that we're sharing by living right where the food is. So I believe that that's the healthiest type of food to eat, food that is grown uh, cleanly um, right where you live. Uh, there are many different kinds of co-ops. There are many different uh, aspects to the uh, so-called co-op movement. Um, and the focus isn't really that important. There are many different services to be provided by people working together in a cooperative manner. I think that the form of cooperation is, is what is really important because um, by uh, giving up some of our, uh, our sequestering ourselves from other people, by giving up some of our uh, private interests, we, we learn and we grow through working with other people. Um, and in doing that, we create systems um, ourselves. And rather than plugging in the systems that are already uh, defined and functioning outside of us and over which we may have no control, uh, we focus in on an area of our lives that is important. For example, that's what we've done here with food. Uh, we believe that the quality of food that we eat and the way that that food is produced does make a difference. That it um. When you join, you become a member of the co-op, and it becomes your store. And I feel, for myself, it's a responsibility. Um, the things that I want that aren't here, I let people know. The things that are here that I don't want, I let people know. My input is something that I feel like is a responsibility to the store. Mm -hmm. It's a different atmosphere. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, the commercial grocery stores are important for the people that aren't aware of other things. For instance, nutritional and economical things that are important to me for the store. Um, but yeah, I feel like everybody's in a real rush and, and there's no uh, rapport, communication with the people shopping. You know, that's very rare. It's just a very individual thing. You just go in, you buy your food and you leave without making contact or very seldom do you make contact with any people. And here I come in, I've been coming in, you know, since, you know, with my baby and he, everybody holds him or he, get, he gets to play or somebody, a kid plays with him. And, um, so it's a social thing for me too. Um, first of all, the fact that it's a locally provided food, uh, especially around 40% of it, is an attractive thing, uh, especially for me and my husband because we had this idea that supporting the local merchant is an, a commitment that um, all of us do have for the survival of uh, the producer who is not so large. Bec and second of all, the fact that a major portion of it is organic 
uh, is also uh, a real good point in that we're assured that there is no chemical additive or preservative added to the food. We, uh, it um, is an overall uh, future goal of the co-op to not uh, allow any of that to come into the store because of the advantage of uh, not making it available when there are several supermarkets in town which do provide that. My husband and I have a 20-acre plot in which we try to play farm in the fact that we try to provide as much for ourselves as possible in the area of growing our own food and finding ways to preserve it through the winter. And uh, as I have said, the rising costs of food providing and knowing what is contained in your food by what you have grown yourself and then providing a cooperative effort for your neighbor, uh, that this is a process of eliminating concern and future food shortage for. I am involved in the co-op because it is a route for social change in this country. I think the co-ops are just after 10 years people are actually listening to us. They actually are believing what we're saying, that cooperation works, that people can participate in the decision making, that people can share in the process of the store, that by recycling, by caring where your food comes from, it makes things work a lot easier and it, things are more pleasant. Profits go back to the people not to the fall guys that are sitting behind the desk at the black leather chair. Um, in 77, we decided to become a legal cooperative. Up to this time, we'd just been an associated body with no de you know, delegated authorities or anything. So what would happen is the liability would re fall on the people who was on the, on the check signing list. And that wasn't real fair because that's a <laughs> if somebody had come in and sue us, you know, four or five people would end up out of their own pockets having to, to foot the bill. So we sought uh, legal assistance with one of our members who was a lawyer and went through the process of filing articles of incorporation to the state of Minnesota. So now we are a legal uh, cooperative under the charters of Minnesota. In the process, we also had to write bylaws, which is sort of like, you know, the rules of the game, how we want the store to run. And that we worked on from 77 to 78. We also elected a board of directors. Before that time, all the meetings were done on a general membership basis. You know, people, the members, whoever wanted to come in, just came in, and we'd make some decision. Three months later, we'd probably bring up the same subject. A whole different crew of people could have been here, and the decision could be overturned. So that wasn't real effective for an organization to keep any ongoing work, to, you know, keep it going. So the board of directors, they're elected for a one-year term, and they are the, the ultimate decision-making body up to the general membership meetings. Um, they decide policies as far as like budgets, setting up committees, um, things like that. And that's the system we're operating under right now. There's still controversy about how we're going to run the store, as any other organization would find. You have differences of what the goals are and things, and that's one of our current issues right now. Well, where are the co-ops going? They're growing, that's what they're doing, for one thing. They're getting bigger and bigger. Um, our volume sales here have uh, really increased a lot uh, in the last year or so. We're up t upwards of uh, nine, $10,000 a month sales. Um, the membership is growing, uh, which sort of brings up my one of my bigger qualms about the growth of the co-op, uh, hoping that uh, that the involvement in the co-op and the participation of the members, which is, as far as I'm concerned, every bit as important as the stuff you buy at the co-op, uh, if that is going to grow along with it, or are the co-ops going to turn into mini and maxi supermarkets where you go to get bulk food at cheap prices? Um, at the present time, here we're going through the fact that the co-op is growing more rapidly than the store is able to, to handle. I believe that the co-op um, 
concept will grow and will permeate into the community as people are really placed in an economy crunch of purchasing food. You'll hear the lament <laughs> week after week, oh, my food, my grocery bill has just really gone out of sight. And just because of that initial primary concern, I think will really uh, prompt a lot of people to pursue more gardening concepts as well as uh, developing a more cooperative effort in the, food, in the area of uh, food provision. I guess I don't, I don't see any changes except basic changes, uh, more, um, more organized, um, bigger perhaps with uh, a larger selection of um, peanut butter. I'd like to see it become more organic, more organic foods brought in, maybe, maybe a choice of uh, organic peanut butter, which would be more expensive than maybe the non-organic peanut organic. butter. Grown without any chemicals at all. Now there may be some that's uh, a whole peanut butter or a whole food that's got all the nutritions in it and no preservatives, but not grown from organic peanuts, say, okay? And that's, that's a lot of people just prefer that. But I'd like to see, uh, you know, more organic foods, more pure foods going stronger in that direction. I don't, I don't think that it will go that way, but that's, that's where I'd like to see it. So I would urge somebody who's interested in seeing what happens to, to come in, you know, to be in the store for a while, to feel the energy, to see um, how it, it can get close to chaos, how, how there are rough edges, how it's not a well-oiled machine that runs perfectly efficiently all the time. Okay, one, one of the things that's most important, I think, about what happens at the co-op is, uh, is cooperation. Uh, the way that the store is run and the, uh, the principles that, are, uh, that motivate the, uh, the whole co-op network that we fit into have to do with people uh, sharing enough of their lives to learn to work together uh, toward common goals. Other people may speak too, but it, it seems like 
you're directly affected. Okay, everybody has an input to make. And if they decide they're going to do something, they should follow through with it or say, okay, I'm not going to do it. You know? And I think part of the real problem this time around is that the whole board lives out of town. And that um, a lot of you we do only see once a month. 